Hey guys, welcome back. So today I'm going to be talking to you, Kirby, about a question I've got for you. So in a previous video we just did, you had mentioned, you know, talking to a coworker or a friend of yours or someone that quit their job and you held them accountable. And, you know, that is the right thing to do. So a funny thing, when I first met Kirby, I was so used to seeing online influencers be like, yeah, quit your job, screw them, don't work for someone else. But Kirby was like the total opposite. It was like, if you quit your job, you know, what's your plan? <laughs> Which is the logical way to go about it? So, I mean, maybe like with this video, you know, I'd like to go into depth as to like, what are the reasons why quitting your job, even though it's maybe a goal for people to have that option, you know, why it shouldn't be, you know, the first thing they're just trying to attack, you know, that there should be other building blocks in place before they just go ahead and just say, I quit, I'm done. Uh, it, it's funny, I'm about to take you back to, I'm at a meetup here in, here in Tampa. <laughs> I mean, this social media thing is for real. I mean, like this whole quit your job, quit your job, you should work for nobody thing is serious. So I'm at a meetup and this is a meetup. This is not a real estate meetup. This is a, a buying business meetup. And I'm sitting there and everybody's dressed to the hill. I mean, suits, ties, everything. Everybody's looking the part. Alex, you know me. I'm shorts and t-shirt. I'm the only guy shorts and t-shirt. Everybody else is and then, you know, of course, I'm thinking like, all right, maybe they came from, you know, they came from work and came to the meetup. But that wasn't the case. The only person, so understand, and I'm not making this racial at all, but me, I was the only black guy there. And then there was one female there and she was sitting right to my left. She was dressed in a dress. Out of all the people there, I say it was about 15 people, small meetup, small business meetup. And again, this is people that's out looking to buy businesses. You know, she's dressed, but she was the only one that was coming from work. Everybody else, they was dressed up just to look the part. And then come to find out, you know, of course, everybody's focused and enamored by, you know, the, the males that's dressed up, asking them questions. And then I'm sitting there and I'm noticing that, like, after one guy talks, then one guy talks, then another guy talks. And it's what they're saying sounds familiar, very familiar to me. And it sounds familiar because it's the same thing I hear on YouTube shorts from content creators. They're just repeating it word for word. You know, they might put a little small spin on it, but game recognized game. I've heard that before. Uh, and then so we getting around and you're hearing people saying, oh, yeah, no, I don't have a job. You know, I got wife, kids. Uh, I've been looking to buy a business for three months. Uh, you know, we're struggling, but, you know, I'm not working for nobody else. I'm I'm, I'm only going to work for myself. I'm thinking that's the dumbest thing on earth. But the only people that was actually doing deals was the lady to my left who owns a business and me. Everybody else just hoping and wishing. But they're out there looking apart. But they're hoping and wishing that somebody going to come and give them some great idea. But the social media thing is super real where... People that they don't know, they just look online and be like, oh, this person is successful. They say don't work. I ain't going to work. Damn kids, damn wife, damn way of life, damn bills due. Oh, oh no, I'm, I'm too good to work for somebody else. I mean, I know multiple people that have that idea and some live closer to me than I wish, but they believe that you shouldn't work for nobody. But they don't understand your job, your W-2 job is the biggest wealth building tool that you have to get out of the situation that you're in. Yeah, it's I mean, I definitely can relate to the idea or the desire to not have to depend on a job or not want to work for somebody. But, you know, I look at it in like, say, my situation. I truthfully, I do like where I work. I like the environment I work in. I like the people I work with, the job. I like the task. Now, it is a goal of mine to not have to be dependent on that job one day. But by the time I reach that goal, will I quit? I don't know. I don't think that would be my first take. Like, oh, now I'm free. Now I'm done with you guys. You know, so I think it depends too, like where you work. But I mean, the goal of becoming 
fully financially independent, I think is a good goal, but to just burn bridges, I think can lead to worse issues in the future. Cause you never know, say things get hard or something. And, you know, only 20% of your assets are operating in a hard time. You know, do you have structures in place to actually function off of that 20% cash flow? If not, then you're going to have to look for active income. So I think like it just goes hand in hand. You've always got to back yourself and be 100% sure that you are dependent or independent from anything you're trying to cut off. And you've told me this before, too, even with like, say, relationships or people like if you're going to cut them loose or say something that just cuts you off from them, you have to be 100% sure that you actually mean it and that you are dedicated to what you're saying, because don't be the person to cut something off, whether it be a job, a family member, a friend or whatever. And then something happens and then now you go running back to them and needing them. Right. And that's that's a good point there. I want to bring up the point of you want I, I get people want to quit their job. I, I get it. But when it makes sense and, and this is what people think. Oh, when they coming up with their time dynamic or time allocation in life, they always say, oh, well, I need eight hours of family time. So I can't do I only can work a job. I mean, I only can own a own a business or whatever, or however they think about it. But it would be more feasible if you have that drive to own your own business. Why not work for somebody else now to maintain the the bare minimum living that you and your family need? And that same drive you have, you go work eight to ten hours extra. Yeah, somebody's gonna have to sacrifice time with the family, time with the kids. Gonna have to sacrifice sleep. Is gonna have to sacrifice. But while you're building up that business or you building up that side hustle or you building up that extra, extra streams of income, then once your income from everything besides your job doubles or triples what you're making at your job, then if you want to walk away, then go ahead. But just to sit, sit there oblivious and have no cash flow coming in and saying, no, I'm not going to work for nobody else is asinine. You cutting off your nose in front of your, in spite of your face. Why would you want to go that route? I mean, I know the influencers, the social media influencers are saying this, but again, they're saying it from a position of already being there. It's not many social media influencers that actually, oh, I quit my job. I didn't have no money. And I said, I'm just going to start a business. What they're saying is when they're telling you this, they're going off the knowledge base that they have now. Hey, I could have quit my job. I could have started from zero and I could have still made it happen. So when they're telling you this, they're not telling you based off the stuff that they did. They tell them off the stuff that they could do with the knowledge that they have now when they're at the level that they're at. Like no matter what level I'm at, I'm never going to forget where I started at. Nothing that we talk about on this channel is about stuff that we think or stuff that, oh, if we could have did different, oh, you should do what we didn't do different. It's always based on real life facts of the things that we've already did and the truth of the matter is your income is your biggest wealth building tool live on less than you make i know everybody hate hearing that but you live on less than you make to build that nut to start the side hustle or you, it's side hustles out there that you don't have to put any money into and start that and then grow into a business if you want to go buy another business you use your w2 income live on live way below your means come up with the money and make that happen. Or you can, you know, uh, consolidate money from other investors and then go buy the business. But you're still taking care of your family. Taking care of your family is one thing. Starting a business is another thing. Because usually when you start a business, you're not trying to take money out of the business for yourself for the first two or three years. How are you going to survive? But people have this concept, oh, I start a business, I can take a salary day one. You take a salary day one starting a business, that's why the business don't flourish because you're not reinvesting into the business. So you need something else to keep your family afloat in your personal life before the business life can actually take off. But if you start taking money out of these businesses day one, you're screwed. You're absolutely screwed. You already got payroll that you got to pay the employees. You already got inventory. You got to pay for inventory. You got to pay for fixed costs and all this other stuff. So the extra money that's going to grow the business is coming out of your distribution as an owner. So if you're not going to reinvest to keep growing the business, then the business is going to eventually die. And then, then you're screwed on both ends. 
But people have this this great imagination that I could start a business today and I could collect the salary tomorrow. In reality, that's not the truth. I mean, just look at, let's go with Amazon. Let's look at Amazon. Amazon did not produce a profit for 20 years. 20 years. Because Bezos invested all his money back into the business. It's the reason why he started Amazon in his garage. And he didn't go buy a multi-million dollar warehouse and uh, start storing books in it. It was in his garage. And then he just keep reinvesting, keep reinvesting, keep reinvesting, keep reinvesting. And then finally he hit his eureka moment. It's not simple. It's not simple as people try to make it seem on social media, especially on these YouTube shorts. And then these people, because they have so short of imaginations or so short of a of a, a focus factor that they think that a YouTube short will get them there. They don't deep dive into the real nuances of what business is. And then that's why most small businesses, 85% of them fail within the first three years because everybody want to take the money out of business and go live this life of, oh, I'm a business owner. Instead of living like, uh, I got a business, but I'm living cheap as hell. Like everybody I know that don't own no business, they just work in W2 jobs. They, quote unquote, have bigger and better stuff than I have. They have the better car, they have the bigger houses, but I got the money. They sitting here stressing about their life. I'm just sitting here looking at them like, uh, oh, why can't you why can't you afford groceries this week? Because they care about the image and they don't care about the money. The money is a major factor in the whole game. With that being said, guys, if you liked the video, hit the like button. Don't forget to share, subscribe, leave a comment down below, and we'll see you guys in the next one.